today I'd like to have an informal conversation with you about video games and how I believe they teach us as an individual, or specifically me. I'm not talking about educational games, which literally teach us, but instead games that we play on a day-to-day -day basis that influence us at a passive level. To start off with, I'm going to talk about Reseteer, or as some people call it Reketeer, a game that is about economy and trading and all that good stuff. But instead of talking about the little kids who try to be the biggest shysters in the entire universe, I'm going to instead talk about how the game teaches us, on a passive level, management and memory. See, the game is set up to be a trading game. You have to buy low, sell high, right? Like, basic principles. You have to constantly be making a profit, and the best profit at each point in time. But one thing that I believe that the game does really well is it teaches us memory, as each and every customer that comes into the store has a different price value that they're willing to associate to an item, or a maximum wallet size. So let's say we go and, you know, we play the game and the kid comes in and wants an apple. The kid might not be able to buy the apple at full price because we have it up because of, say, a daily sale or a shortage or something like that. So you have to drop the price down so the kid can buy it. You always have to remember that. Same thing with the old men. The old men generally have a higher wallet than other uh, NPCs, but they generally won't spend as much because they're crabby, so even if their wallet is high, you have to slowly entice them to raise their price, and you have to remember this. And I think that game challenges us at a passive level to always remember and plan based on what's around. You know, there is the mercantile uh, portion of the game where the game will teach you uh, to stockpile for sales, but you always want to plan your shop, plan your items, and sell items to people based on what you remember they're willing to buy, and you want to have a nice collection of items in your storefront to entice those people that you want to sell to based on your stock. You have to remember all of this and manage all of this to complete the game. Now, what this game won't teach you is to become a merchant, to take all those skills and bring them out into the world and say, all right, now suddenly I am a pro trader, I can create my own Walmart or my own Dominion and go on. No, it's not a direct analog of teaching. What games teach us is more on a passive skill, such as memory and adaptability. Rested here challenges us to always remember what's going to happen at each point in time, because if you don't remember and you have trouble uh, acclimating to the game's challenge, you get a failure state and you have to start over again, and the game actually makes itself easier to accommodate our failures because we carry over into the, you know, constant, um, the constant restarts. So we're always challenged to remember, and we're always challenged to adapt to, you know, the events that are happening. And I think when you look, when you look at the passive, uh, the passive levels of the game, the intricate nature of it, stuff like memory, you know, yeah, stuff like memory will always pass on to another game. Players who play StarCraft II, for example, uh, they have massive micro, and they learn this, and this is a learned reaction to the game. Now, this is something that, uh, I heard in passing, I was actually walking past the television once, when I believe it was a David Suzuki episode came on about pro gamers and their micro and how it translates outside the game. Now, I didn't watch all of it because I'm not too big of a fan of David Suzuki. He has a bit of a reputation among my friends as being a bit of a sensationalist. But the section that I did watch was specifically about those pro gamers and how they took them out of that scenario of, you know, playing StarCraft, it might have been just StarCraft 1, not even StarCraft 2, of outside of StarCraft and gave them an app where they had to click a yellow dot that popped up on screen, and they found that their skills didn't translate. Their micro was either on 
par with other people or below other people, like their reaction time in micro, I don't think that's what we take outside of a game. And that's, like, outside of the game in question. That's because there's also another study that I've uh, seen footage on. Oh, also, I should add, uh, I went on Google to find the David Suzuki episode in question, you know, just to see, like, I did extensive research to find this episode again so I can uh, make sure that that was their uh, their deci- or their final decision was that, it, you know, the players were on par or below other people. But when I went to Google and I typed in David Suzuki Starcraft, nothing came up. So my hands are tied. I can't find the episode. Uh, the other study that I saw in passing and heard other people talk about was one where if a person uh, repeats a tough task over and over again, their brain activity doesn't increase, but instead it decreases. And the reason for this, I believe, is that a person will create almost like little mental hooks when create when completing a task over and over again to make it easier on them the next time. So they have to think less. They have to concent- concentrate less. It's the same thing as wiping your butt. You don't focus on wiping your butt after you're four years old. You just go and wipe your butt and you're done and it's over and congratulations. Same thing with cooking. If you cook a recipe and you've cooked that recipe multiple times, you're not going to focus on it as if it was a new recipe. But if part of that recipe is in another recipe, you're going to focus because those skills aren't translating directly to the new recipe. Yes, you're going to know how to do a part of it, but not the whole thing. So when it comes to video games, I think we should always challenge ourselves to learn the game as best as possible, but understand what we're learning afterwards, like what we're learning on a passive level. Which, in StarCraft II's case, we're learning observation. You have to play a very, very tight game with your opponent. You have to always watch what they're doing explore, take risks, and read your opponent in order to win. You can't just sit there, play a strategy every single game, and expect to win because your opponent will adapt faster than you do. And you can take those skills outside of that game. And when players apply their skills to different games, what they've learned, they become a better gamer overall. I've run into uh, multiple gamers in my history of playing, that uh, they'll take it, they'll take a game, they'll play it, and they'll say, "All right, I'm playing till I lose." So that's probably one game of a MOBA, say League of Legends or Dota. They play one, they lose, they're gone, and they just don't play another because the game has now frustrated them. And that sense of frustration is a good thing and a bad thing. If you let your frustration get to you, you're not going to learn. You're going to actually inhibit yourself. Because that frustration is you not understanding how you lost. You, you in some cases, believe that you were not at fault, and the game was at fault. And in some cases, with bad games, that's true. But that's not in all games. If a player plays a game of, say, Dark Souls, dies once, and then just gives up and logs off and waits probably a day or so to go back and, and try the same thing again, they may just repeat the same mistakes because they didn't sit around and learn and think about their actions. And that's what that's one of the conceits of what I'm talking about here, is that I believe that games teach us passively, but I also believe that we should challenge ourselves to learn what a game is trying to teach us. Because in the end, the more we challenge ourselves, the better we are at both playing games and just doing general tasks outside of games. Every single skill that we learn during our lives can be applied to other ones. Even something as simple as wiping our butts at least teaches us repetitive motion. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is, games teach us. Games teach us at a passive level, and that we can learn from them if we uh, pay attention to what we're learning, and that if we challenge ourselves, we'll advance faster than we would if we never did. And I mean, that's that's almost a general rule of life. If we're not challenging ourselves, then we're not learning. And we should apply that to video games as well. 
Because video games can be toys. Yeah, they can. But we should always try to take them as seriously as we can in, in the situation and learn as much as we can from them. Because it's something that we can bring out of just bring out of, you know, video gaming and into the real world. You're not going to become a super pro, like, uh, sniper in the army by playing a sniper in a video game, but you'll at least learn patience and, and other passive skills that you probably wouldn't have had. That's, I think I've repeated myself several times now near the end, but I believe that's all I have to say. And I hope for a first informal talk, this was, you know, okay. Uh, if you liked what I had to say, or you have any uh, comments or advice, if you listened this far, thank you. Uh, please leave a comment and let me know what you think, or hit me up on Twitter, or even my email. I'm going to read it all. This is my first one. I'm really curious about feedback, and I'd like to know if I'm talking out my ass or not, because this is just my opinion, and it's not fact. So I'd like to know what everybody else thinks. Thank you. Bye. Damn it! The entire team came down. This is gonna be super bad for us. I'm getting so trolled. No. I'm going to stop that uh, super boss camp at the top. You guys died while I stopped that. That sucks. We gave the boss time, it doesn't work. We should have got the temple instead. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that thing. Yep. There's no way I can take that and keep it. He's moving down. No. Oh. Stay off of this. Nope. You're almost back, sir. Yep. That's the one I clicked.
Oh, Zertil's in here. We should capture this mercenary. The night of the sun grows beneath the Soon they shall pass in my glory. This one's life. I would just like to say I have no idea what happened, but due to a weird thing where I ulted a guy and got stunned, my ult's cooldown was reset. Which is not a thing that's supposed to happen. At least I died for him. You gonna take the top one? Yep, we gotta take the top one. Oh shit, we're going in on them? They're not good, just keep doing what you're doing. Like I do after a rough night. You'd better get to it, man. Yeah, hey, you're looking like I do after a rough, rough night. You better hit the healing fountain. Man, I heard that seven times today, Murden. Thank you. And I've only played one game with you. This should be game, actually, if you keep the blue one. It's over. 
Over now. Leave my domain. Damn, I didn't get to see if anybody said anything back to me. <laughs> you do it so late. What'd you say? Well, you do it so late. Yeah, true. True, true.